Before we properly begin, I'd just like to clarify if I sound a bit stuffy. I've been sick over the weekend as a shadow of a certain Drekavats passed over me, and I haven't been feeling as good. Anyways, today we're looking at what I believe are the 12 best months of the year, starting with December. Not much happens this month in all honesty, like aside from the snow in some places, it's just the end of the year. What is interesting about this month is its hint at the origin of the modern calendar year. December comes from the Latin word decim, meaning 10. Yet nowadays it's listed as the 12th month of the year, so what's up? This is because we use what's called the Gregorian calendar, which was derived from the Julian calendar, which came from the ancient Roman calendar, believed to have been invented by Romulus, first king of Rome himself, around 753 BC. The Roman calendar was much more complex due to its lunar basis, with only 10 months having formal names. Winter was a dead period where nothing really happened for the government or military, so the months were named from March to December. Now before we go much further, I'd also like to compare and contrast the history of English months with my wife's native Ukrainian months, just to explore how different cultures identified with yearly seasons and their names. The modern Ukrainian calendar was derived from the ancient Slavic calendar, which, rather than having months as a fixed number of days, was simply based on vague periods throughout the year. Their names were based on the natural phenomena and cultural factors of the time. Thus, the names of months in Ukrainian are much more literal in name, rather than numeric or named after gods or rulers. In Ukrainian, December is called Kryudin, the H is hard for English speakers, but for you Slavs out there, let me know if I pronounced it right, or if my wife has the right to laugh at me every time I try. This comes from the word krudka, which means lumps of snow. Krudin was the time of non-passable roads, due to clumps of snow blocking major routes and slowing travel. Similar to ancient Romans, the ancient Slavic calendars started in March, and ended in the month we now call February. November. Honestly, September through November are all named numerically, with 7, Septim, for September, 8, Octo, for October, and 9, Novem, for November. There were attempts to rename some of these months after various Roman emperors, but none of them ever really caught on. In Ukrainian, November is called Listopad, which means falling leaves, for understandable reasons. Similarly, October is Jovten, roughly meaning yellow, as this was also called the month of yellow leaves. It was also a period of weddings after the harvest. September is Veresen, which translates to in honor of heather flowers. Heather flowers bloomed around this time of year and were very popular and pretty. If your name is Heather, Veresen is a toast to you. August. July and August used to be called Quintilis and Sextilis for the fifth and sixth months of the year. It wasn't until 44 BC that Quintilus was renamed to July in honor of the renowned dictator Julius Caesar, and a few decades after, in the year 8 BC, Sextilis was renamed to August after, guess who, Augustus Caesar, emperor of Rome and great nephew of the prior Julius Caesar. In Ukrainian, August is Serpen, the time to harvest with sickles, since the name comes from the word Serp for sickle. July is Lipen from the tree Lipa, or the linden tree, whose flowers were commonly used in tea and medicine. June. May and June are named after the Roman gods, Maya, a fertility goddess who oversaw agriculture, and Juno, the goddess of marriage and women. These names are also based on the Latin words maiores, which means elders, and juvenis, which meant young people. In Ukrainian, June is Cervin, which has a double meaning. Cervoni means red, but cerv means worm, so this was both the month of ripened red berries and worms galore. May is called traven, or the time of lush flowering and grasses. Fun fact, I have a niece named Maya, and guess when she was born? May! Maya, if you're watching, this is for you. April. April's name comes from the word aperio, to open or bud more specifically. This month was seen as the official beginning of spring. Naturally, Ukrainian experiences a similar perspective, as kvitin means blooming, as this was when the first trees would begin to bloom after winter. March. 
March was the time Rome began or continued military campaigns, and was therefore named after Mars, the god of war. Coincidentally, I find it curious that March, as an English word, syncs up well with this theme of soldiers marching off to war. In Ukrainian, March is Berezin, meaning birch or birch forest. In the dry season, birch forests dried up and were burned to obtain ash, which was used as fertilizer. February. When January and February got their names, they were still listed at the end of the year. January was derived from the god Janus, protector of gates and doorways. Janus is depicted with two faces, one facing to the past and the other to the future. And temples to Janus were always open during times of war and closed off in times of peace. February comes from the word februa, meaning to cleanse, because in this month there is a festival held celebrating purification and atonement. In Ukrainian, February is gluti, meaning furious, as this was the period when severe frost prevailed. January was called Sichen, meaning the split of winter, as this was the transitional period from gentle cold to furious blizzards. If you've made it this far, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more content like this. And if you are a Slavic viewer, let me know in the comments how the Ukrainian months compare to your country's history, or how bad I am at pronouncing all these names. I'd love to find out. Now back to the video. Now, the old 10-month plus winter lunar calendar was ultimately changed when Julius Caesar became Pontifex Maximus, or High Priest of the College of Pontiffs, a Roman religious organization. Caesar changed the 12 months to be based on the sun instead of the moon, and the winter months were moved to the beginning of the year instead to keep everything lined up in a solar cycle. Because of this, there were attempts to rename some other months, but as previously mentioned, they never stuck. The final change to our modern calendar took place much later, in 1582, when Pope Gregory XIII added reforms to the Julian calendar. The main change was a shortening of days from 365.25 to a whopping 365.2425. The one definitely had a lot of free time to catch such a blatant discrepancy. This change was useful, however, as now leap years could be used to catch up to the solstices and equinoxes, especially Easter, which would now line up with its day of observance. As far as the Ukrainian take on this change, by this time Christianity was widespread enough for most cultures to adopt the Gregorian. However, the large presence of Eastern Orthodox faith has resulted in some modern Ukrainians still following the Julian calendar for religious observances though this is soon to fade out as Ukraine becomes more culturally aware of their roots. Well, in case you've ever wondered about the origins of the calendar months, now you know. And you know about the Ukrainian months, too. Now you can spread this knowledge to your peers and feel cool for taking the time to watch this video. Hey, speaking of, if you aren't subscribed, you should do so now. And like the video, too. It helps my channel a lot. Don't forget to leave a comment on your favorite month of the year. It doesn't have to be your birth month. And let me know if you learned something new. I'll see you all for more feudal facts in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.